Okay, and I believe we're recording. All right, well, welcome back everyone. Um, here's our rules and expectations slide. As always, please stay muted if you're not speaking, um, but don't just unmute yourself. Please use that raise hand button to ask your questions in Zoom. This is very, very important. Please don't just unmute yourself and start talking because that is very disrupting um, and distracting. And I wanna be able to get to your question um, as soon as I possibly can. So I will call on you, raise your hand. Type questions into chat or Discord at any time and our TAs will get to you. I may not see your chats um, because it's hard to see when I'm also presenting, but someone will see them and help you out. Um, and I think we've been over this a lot of times, so just review this slide if you ever have questions about things. Um, you can always check out our syllabus as well. All right. So we're going to be using Replit or Colab today. I think I might be using a little bit of a mix just because um, I'm going to go over some of our assignments. It's a little easier to see in Colab sometime, but pull out your um, whichever coding version you would like, whether you want to use Replit or Colab, and we will get started today. So um, you did what, hopefully you watched the loops video that I sent out to all of you. Um, I did send a class-wide email um, on the video to watch instead of class last week. It was on loops and this was from last year. So we do this course every summer. Um, so if you wanna do our course again next summer, you definitely can. And we follow roughly the same schedule because it's me teaching it every time. So um, I put on our loops video from last year, but also I wanted to give you some extra videos to watch that aren't just me talking. And this course I really love. This is Python for everybody. Um, it says that it, they're actually not updating this course anymore, but it's very nice and it's in this checklist format. So if you create a class, you can actually go create an account. You can actually go through this website. I highly recommend it if you are the type of person that likes to have extra resources um, to work alongside class. And they have a specific video on loops um, that I think would be useful. All right, so um, if you have questions from last class, please do put those into the chat. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna get going on a quick review here to make sure we're all caught up on the same page. So we have been talking two weeks ago about conditional statements. Now this is code, it's a, lot, it's a control structure. It allows us to um, have blocks of code that only run if some condition is true. And it's gonna use um, those comparison operators. So the equal equal, the greater than, the less than. These are called if statements. We practice these if statements and this is the syntax. So we'll have some sort of condition here. So if this condition, don't forget your colon. Don't forget your new line with a tab. And then your code is going to go here that you want to run if that condition is true. And now when your code runs, it's gonna to get to this if statement, evaluate it. If the condition is false, it's gonna skip this entirely, just keep going. If the condition is true, then any code that's indented here is going to run. And then this is an example of code outside the if statement. Um, so anything indented under that if statement um, is going to run as part of that if condition. Anything outside is going to run regardless. And we're going to practice this a couple times just to make sure everyone understands. So here's another example. So we have x equals 1, y equals 1. And now my if statement says if x equals equals y, print x is equal to y. So this will, since these two are equal, it's going to say if x equal to y, yes it is, print x is equal to y. So this will print x is equal to y to our console. Of course, you can change whatever code goes in here. You could say print hello. You could say, you know, modify x or y in some way. Um, but the point that I want you to get across is how we use these if statements and how they are evaluated. So the other part of if is elif. So let's say you wanna check more than one condition. Um, you can actually uh, check several other conditions with elif. You can um, stack them if you will. Well, we can see an example of that. But if we wanna check more than one condition, we check the first condition with if. If that one is false, it's gonna to go to the elif. And it says, all right, this is the second condition I'm gonna check. And um, this will also, just like the if statement, only evaluate if the first if condition is false. So let's look at this example here. We have x equals one. If x is greater than 10, print x is greater than 10. Elif, x is less than five, print x is less than five. 
So what this is going to do, if x is, let's say x is 11, then this if statement is going to run. It's going to skip the elif entirely. If this is false, it's going to go to the elif. And in this case that I've written out here, we have x is equal to 1. If x is less than 10, nope, false, skip. Now we're on the elif. If elif, x is less than 5, print x is less than 5. And else. So this else will run if both the if and elif conditions before it. So any amount of conditions before it, if, elif, 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 however many you have, any of them before it are false, or all of them before it are false, then this else condition is going to run. This is just a catch-all. It says any other condition is false. Um, and else, in this case, now print something like this. So let's run through what we have here. We have x is equal to 11. So let's say if x is greater than 10, print x is greater than 10. OK, so in this case, that's true, and this is going to print. But let's say we change it a bit. Let's say x is 6. Oops. Let's say x is 6. Now, in this case, x is equal to 6. We have if x is greater than 10. Nope, that's false. Go to the next one. L if x is less than 5. Nope. False. Go to the next one. Else, just anything else. Now it's going to print x is between 5 and 10. OK, so any questions about if, elif, else statements so far? And what I'm actually going to do is go over some of those assignments that I gave you a couple weeks ago to make sure that we all know how to do them and you can see the answers. Um, but please do let me know if you have questions about if statements. And feel free to put those in the chat if so. OK, so let's look at this assignment. This assignment is a little tricky because you can do it with loops. So if you already know about loops, you can do this assignment with loops, which we'll learn about today or review today. Um, but if you didn't know loops, that's OK. There's a manual way to do this, too. So I'm just going to copy and paste this so I can see the instructions for myself. I've got a Colab notebook opened here. I'm just going to paste these instructions in as text. All right, so we want to run. Write Python code that goes through each number less than 10 and prints us the number is divisible by four or not. OK, divisible. What, what operator and I, am I going to use to see if a number is divisible by something or not? Go ahead and put in the chat, what operator is this talking about here? Divisibility. Go ahead and put in the chat, what operator is talking about divisibility? Not OK, so I, I'm seeing a lot, a lot of slashes. That's division. I'm saying what operator will tell you if a number is divisible by something or not? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Mod. Uh huh. Great job, everyone. Great job. So we're going to be using the modulo. So as an example, let's just say that. So let's print. Let's check if a number is even. That means it's divisible by two. So in that case, Let's say I have my number. My number is 6. I want to check if it is divisible by 2. You can say your number, the mod operator, 2. And if we print that, it will print the remainder when your number is divided by 2. And in this case, we know that it's divisible by 2 if that number is 0. All right, it's given it some time to connect. There it goes. So at, so 6 modulo 2 is 0. That means 6 is divisible by 2. Now let's try 7. This should be 1. There we go. So not divisible by 2. So in this case, we want to check for divisibility by 4. So mod 4. So we want to go through each number less than 10 and print if the number is divisible by 4. I should have said each positive number less than 10. Some of you got me on that and sent me some negative numbers. Um, so let's say we're going to start with uh, 1, all right? And now print if x mod 4, print x mod 4. But we actually want to print, you know, some sort of statement here if it's divisible or not. So let's use if statements. All right, so this is just my scratch work. I'm going to write my actual code down here. So I just mean this is 
I always recommend having something where you're just experimenting with the code and then you can kind of figure out how to write it out. Okay, so if I'm gonna write this code, I'm gonna go through each number less than 10. I'm gonna start at one and I'm gonna say, um, if x mod four is equal to zero, print x is divisible by four. And Colab is very, very smart and tries to give me um, suggestions. Sometimes you can take those suggestions, but I uh, suggest that you try to write it yourself first and then use AI later. All right, so now we've got x1. If x mod four is equal to zero, print x is divisible by four. And to, without loops, so what we're gonna see, we're gonna see why we like loops. Without loops, you are just going to increase this every time. One way to do that, you could say x equals x plus one. So now x is gonna equal the earlier value of x plus one. So now x should equal two. And we're gonna do the same thing. If x mod four is equal to zero, print x is divisible by four. All right. And I, since I don't have any loops, I'm just gonna keep copying and pasting this. Make sure you're, that your indents are okay. Um, until, so as I say, we've made it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And always check that these indents are in line. It tried to add some extra space here that we don't want. Okay, so now hopefully we have a program which will go through each number less than 10 without loops and print whether or not it's divisible by four by using this modulo operator. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it and see what our output should look like. And here we go. So four is divisible by four and eight is divisible by four. It's exactly what we should be expecting. That's what we want um, when we're talking about um, looking using modulus, we're checking divisibility. Okay, so that was that assignment there. There was a little bit of a bonus to check if a number is prime. Some of you used ChatGPT, which is completely fine. That's completely fine. I actually list it as a resource on our syllabus because ChatGPT is a great resource for learning to code. The catch, however, is I request that to learn how to code, if you're using ChatGPT, you need to understand the code that ChatGPT gives you. Um, don't just take the code without understanding it, because I saw a lot of uh, functions that people were writing that were a little more advanced than we had been doing in class. Um, and I, I suspect some ChatGPT uh, chat use, not, not from everyone. And it's like I said, it's totally fine. You can use it. I just really, uh, if you're going to, make sure that you understand it every piece of code that it's writing for you. You can even ask it to explain the code um, to you. So this is how you would do something like this without loops. Um, now let's look at, so first of all, are there any questions about this assignment here? Yeah, and I, I love, uh, thank you for putting that in the chat. I love hearing you know, about how, how it worked and, um, you know, some, sometimes as a coder, you get stuff wrong and you work on it for a long time. And that, that happens to everyone. It still happens to me. All right, glad we could go over that one. If you do have, if you think of questions about it, um, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, but this is how I would do that without loops. Of course, then we learned about loops. We'll come back to this. So let's look at this other assignment. All right. And a copy and paste. So this is putting strings in alphabetical order. And I saw some people struggle with this one as well. And that's totally okay. We're going to go over it. All right, so write Python that prints strings in alphabetical order using if statements. Okay, so first of all, code should contain the variable string one assigned to the variable apple. Most of you got this perfectly. So you created string one equals apple. You created and see sometimes. <laughs> so we've got we've got Google trying to be really smart and help us out here, um, but we actually want to learn how to do it ourselves. So I'm going to keep typing out as if Google's not giving me suggestions. 
Um, so, okay, so we've got these three strings and we wanna check for alphabetical order. Remember that um, we can compare strings. So let's try it out a little bit here. So let's say um, print string, and this is not solving the assignment. I'm gonna put a little, here, let's see, scratch work. So this is just us playing around a little bit. So let's print string one uh, is less than string two. Is that true or false? Okay, so that's true. So string one, apple, is less than string two, cat. Okay, okay, so that tells us that the less, the lesser string is gonna be first in alphabetical order. And the greater the string, it's gonna be later in alphabetical order. Okay, so that's important. That's important to us there. Um, so what we can do with that is actually use if statements. And this is where you're actually gonna have to Think about how to structure your if statements a bit. All right, all right, so now we know that. So let's say, let's start with if string one is the lowest. All right, so if string one is less than string two and string one is less than string three. So in this case, this case here is if string one comes first in the alphabet because we're seeing if string one is less than string two and string one is less than string three. So I'm checking if string one needs to come first. Well, first of all, print string one. Okay, now what do we need to check? Now we need to check the order that string two and string three should come in. So now we need to say, okay, now if We've already printed string one. So now if string two is less than string three, print string two, and then print string three, because we know string three needs to come next. However, what do I need to put here to check if string three is actually, if string three is actually less than string two? What needs to go here? And I'm going to give you a hint. It's not another if. It needs to be, go ahead and put in the chat, what needs to go there? So right here, we've checked if string two is less than string three, we're going to print in this order. But I want to print something if string three is less than string two. So what do I need to put right there? Amazing, yes, we wanna put else. You could also put elif, that's totally fine. But in this case, we can do else because the only other option among these two is that string three is less than string two, unless they're the exact same, but that's fine. Then it doesn't matter what order. Okay, so then in the other case, we're gonna print string three and then print string two. Amazing, thank you. Thank you everyone for sharing. So that's one case. This, this is the case overall if string one is the smallest string value. So now we need to replicate this, but for string two and then string three being the smallest. Okay, lots of if statements. You got lots of practice on if statements here. Okay, so now let's say if string two is the lowest. So if string two is less than string one and string two is less than string three, print string two, and now we're gonna check same thing if string one is less than string three, print string one, print string three. So we're, we're just checking alphabetical values. And then just like before, we have this else statement. Else, we need to print string three first, and then print string one. Okay, and now finally, we need one last giant if, nested if block for string three being the smallest. All right, if string three is less than string one and string three is less than string two, print string three. Now check if string one is less than string two, print string one, print string two, and our else statement, 
So very much the same. So you're just taking this template that we had here and pretty much just filling it in, iterating over that for each one. Else print string two and then, oops, I forgot to say print. Print string two and then and string one. Okay, now we've got this big long thing. Let's see if it actually works. So I'm gonna run that. And perfect, it's in alphabetical order. Apple, cat, tree. What if I change this? So actually, what if I make this uh, apple and this cat? Let's make sure. One good thing when you write code is to test it. Make sure it works even if you change some things around with your variables. And even when we change the values of string one and two, we still get alphabetical order. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you everyone for your answers in the chat. Okay, great job with that one. So back to loops. So some of you, <laughs> because I asked you to watch that video, some of you took the assignments from that video and then did them. Great job to you, applaud to you. You did not have to do that. I didn't I didn't specify it either way, so that's totally fine. But I noticed several people were struggling with it and that's okay because we actually didn't have an official class. We just had you watch a video. So we're gonna go over loops. We're gonna talk about loops. Um, and then we're also gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you the assignments for loops and you're gonna try those. If you didn't try them last time, that's great. You're gonna try them this time. Um, and if you already tried them from last time, then you're going to get to you're going to get a second chance at them. And um, then we will go over the answers to those homeworks next week. OK. And I see some stuff in the chat. Um, error. Oh, and we've got our lovely TAs in here that are helping out. Great. So if you've got an error, um, you know, post your error message in the chat and one of our TAs can help you out. And if I peek at it and want to share it with the class, I might. Okay, so that was a giant review of if statements. Are there questions on if statements? Questions on if statements. Okay. I think we had a pretty good grasp of if statements, but you can always practice, you can always practice. So now let's look really quick. Let's talk about, before we jump into loops, I wanna introduce you to this function called input. This is the, uh, this function, just like print, allows you to print something to the screen, that's output. The input function allows a user, usually, usually you, Right, right now when we're learning, it's usually just you. Um, it allows you to input something into your program. And um, you're gonna have a little placeholder variable for that that will be the variable that accepts the input to it. All right, great. So print, let us print text to the console, but what if we want to receive text input from that console? So in this case, we're gonna use the input statement. And this is what it looks like. So you're just going to set up your variable just like normal, and then you're going to say equals input, and then open parentheses, close parentheses. This is going to let you type something in on the console here. So I'm going to show this in replit. So I've got my replit page open. Hopefully you all can still see it. And I'm going to create a new Python, a new Python file. Okay, so if I just use input um, with nothing else added here, I'm going to say, you know, my variable equals input, open, close parentheses. Now watch the console here. If I run this, I click run. It's not saying anything, it's just, it's doing this. What is it doing? What is it doing? My code's still running, so stop. What is it doing? It's waiting for me to type something. And I can just keep typing and typing. Um, but what this is doing is allowing you to give input to the console. And that, that what that does is assign whatever you typed here while it was waiting for input, whatever you typed here, it's gonna assign to this variable. So let's try that again. Let's say my variable equals input. 
and print my variable. So what I'm going to, what this is doing now is it's going to print whatever I type into the console. So I'm going to run that again. Notice it's just waiting. It's still going. It's waiting. All right. So I'm going to type hi there. I'm going to press enter. Oh, and it printed exactly what I said. Just repeated what I said. So why would you want to use this? Well, you may want to use this if you're asking the user for a variable that you don't yet know the value of. So imagine um, writing a program that is a cash register and you say, okay, how many apples do you want to buy? And the user inputs two. Then you can give them the total cost of two apples. Um, but you don't know, but while you're writing the program, you don't know how many apples this customer is going to order. You need to be prepared for any number that they enter um, and then give them the price of that. There was an assignment that a lot of you attempted that was um, a movie ticket price. It's asking the user how many movie tickets they want to buy and then telling them the total price of those movie tickets. We're going to go over um, how we can do an assignment like that. So this is just the input statement, not adding anything. But usually we don't leave this blank. We don't just say input and then nothing here because that's not very clear to the user that they're supposed to type something. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say type your answer here. It just is blank. So we don't want that. We want to write programs that make sense to our users. So what you can say here is I'm going to say enter a value. And so now these are the instructions. So you've got your input function and whatever you put here is the instructions that are gonna show up so people know what they're supposed to enter. So now if I run this again, now it says enter a value. So it's a little more uh, clear, it's a little clearer that I'm supposed to actually enter something here. So I'm gonna say 13, press enter. All right, now I've got 13. Okay, let's check out, let's check out what is the, well, let me, let me try it again. Let me show you another example. Enter a value. I can say hello. I don't have to follow the instructions. Sometimes, sometimes users of your program don't follow instructions. And maybe I wanted a number, but they entered a string. Sometimes that can happen. So let's check out what actually is the type of our input. Some of you may already know this. We're going to look at what is the type. So we're looking at the data type. Like, is it an integer? Is it a string? Let's let's find out. Let me clear all of this. So now I'm going to say enter a value 10. It says 10. It says it's a string. So anything that we enter into the console and assign to this variable is going to be a string. And a lot of you saw this and what will you um, what you have to do if you want it to be an integer. So let's say so let's say I want to say, um, you know, ent enter a value. Um, if I want this to be an integer, I need it to be. I need to put int around here. There's a couple different ways you can do this. But if you want it to be an integer, you're going to use typecasting. We talked about typecasting way at the beginning of, uh, of our boot camp. But this is allowing you to convert a different data type to an integer. So now if I run this, I can say enter a value, and it will convert it to an integer. One problem here, however, what if I say hello? Now it's going to say I can't convert that to an integer. So we'll talk about how to deal with that. But for now, I just want you to see how to use this input function. Any questions about the input function? Okay. And we talked about these slides here. And we talked about converting our input to an integer. You can always use these slides to reference the things that we've talked about in class before, and I encourage you to do so. We'll get some more practice. Okay, so as this practice, let's ask, let's check some user input. Ask a user for their age and check if they are 18 years or older. If they are print, you are a legal adult. If they are younger than 18, print, you are not a legal adult. All right, let's 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 see how we could do this here. Where did Replit go? 
Oops, here it is. All right. Okay, so this is our exercise. So what we need here is some input from the user. So how should I ask this? How should I ask the user for their age? The age, I need an age variable. Ah, don't look at that. Age equals, what goes here? Go ahead and put in the chat. If we wanna ask the user for their age, what should we do if we want them to be able to enter it from the console? So age equals, and hint, it has to do with the input function. Go ahead and put in the chat. Seeing some guesses coming in. Good, good. Okay. There we go. So we want to use the input function. So age is input. Um, enter your age. What we also want to do is convert that to an integer. So you can say int input. This is always a good practice to wrap it in the integer uh, typecasting just so that you don't um, forget that it's not an integer. Okay, so we've got age and now what happens? Ah, no, it's too good at following instructions. All right, now we wanna check if it's 18 or older. What do I need? What do I need here? What do I need next? I wanna check if they're over 18 or equal to or older than 18. All right, I've got an answer in there. Any ideas? What do we put if we want to check if it's equal to or older than 18? All right, all right. Thank you everyone for your answers. So yes, we want to use an if statement. So now we're gonna say if age is greater than or equal to 18, print you are a legal adult. Now what goes next? Oops. Now it's else. If they're not greater than or equal to 18, then it's else. And I'm gonna print you are not a legal adult. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure it works. Ooh, what do you notice? What do you notice about this? I didn't put a space here. So it's just gonna put the input right at the end of that. And that's okay. Um, but one way to make it a little more readable is to add a space here. So let's run it again. All right, now we've got a space. Enter your age, I'm gonna say 16. Enter, you are not a legal adult. All right, let's test. If we say 18, what does it do? You are a legal adult and let's test, Let's. I like to come up with a lot of test cases. Let's test 100. You are a legal adult. All right. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. Yes, and a good point in here, we also need to handle if that age can't be less than zero. That's true, we could check for that. So if we wanna make sure that they don't input something crazy, like their age is less than zero, um, then we can put some other checks in there. You're welcome to come up with those and let us know um your results i'm not going to go into that right now we're just going to assume that they won't input a negative age but they could and i love that thinking i love that thinking all right all right okay so now we've got to this assignment i'm going to put this at the end of the slide so that you know this is your assignment for input write a program that calculates the total price for someone buying movie tickets if they are 11 dollars each Ask the user to enter the number of movie tickets and then print out the total price. So you don't need to include tax or anything, oops. And as a bonus, if you wanna do a little extra assignment, 
Um, the theater has a discount for bulk ticket orders. If a customer orders more than 20 tickets, each ticket only costs $7. Now incorporate this into the price calculation. So um, this is going to be an assignment for next time. I'm going to give you a little more time to work on it. All right. Great, great, great. Okay, now let's talk about oops. So many of you watched the video last time, um, but I do want to give you, you know, some some conversation on loops. Let's talk a little bit about it to make sure you understand it. So loops are going to be sections of code that repeat. This is part of that control structure that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, this is sections of code that we actually want to do multiple times so we don't have to keep copying and pasting, copying and pasting. So this can be, uh, it can loop a specific number of times or an unknown number of times. And when we say loop over, I'm saying repeat. That's another word for repeat. So I'm, I'm frequently gonna say loop over a code chunk. So why do we need this? We want to re avoid repetitive code that's typing the same thing over and over and over. So, for example, when we were working on this, not this, this here, we had to keep typing x is equal to 1. If x is, divis is mod 4 is 0, print x is root. Now x is equal to x plus 1. All right, now this. We could have solved all of this with a loop. Notice this was a lot of copy and pasting, copy and pasting, but if we had loops, we could just tell it, repeat this part, repeat this over and over and over again. That's what I want you to be thinking about. We don't want to keep copying and pasting, copying and pasting. OK, so avoid repetitive code or tell a computer to do a task a certain number of times. If you have some calculations that just need to happen a certain number of times, you can do that there. OK, so let's talk about types of loops. I don't remember in the video if it talked about both while and for loops, but we're going to go over both of those. So a while loop is a type of loop that's based on a condition, just like our if statements. A while loop is based on a condition, true or false, and it's going to loop for an indefinite number of times. We'll look into what exactly that means. So a while loop is based on a condition, and then if that condition is true, it will repeat the code. It's going to evaluate that condition again, and then if it's true, it repeats the code. And it's going to do that again and again and again until that condition is false. We'll look at that in detail. A for loop is a little different. A for loop is based on iteration. Iteration means going through something a specific number of times. So it's going to loop a very specific number of times. Like you can tell it that you want it to loop 10 times, or you can tell it you want it to loop the amount of times um, it takes for uh, the amount of times equal to like the length of something. We'll look at that in detail. Okay, so while loops. While loops evaluate a condition and then run the code inside that loop, just as I said. So once it reaches the end of the code, it's going to evaluate the condition again. If true, run the code. If false, exit the loop. Kind of like an if statement, but instead of just doing the code one time, it's going to do it again and again and keep evaluating until it can break out of that loop by the condition being false. I know this is a lot of words, so let's look at a diagram. So here's an example of what, it, of what a while loop looks like visually. So let's say this is the start of our code. Go here, condition. If it's true, here's the code that we want to run, some statements. All right. Now we're going to evaluate the condition again. If it's true, evaluate some statements. Keep going. So see how this makes a loop. It's going to keep looping like this until finally our condition is false. And then it ends the loop. Ends the loop. OK, now let's look at what specifically that syntax is. So for us, it's going to, oops, I tried to click on it, while condition. Remember, um, just like with if statements, if it's going to be inside of that loop, inside of that statement, we're going to indent our code. So while condition, code inside our loop, code inside our loop, indented. Anything outside of that loop that we don't want to keep repeating and repeating and repeating, anything outside that is going to be in line right here, not indented. So here's an example. I have my num equals zero while 
my num is less than five. So that's a while keyword that's going to start a while loop. My num is less than five. That's our condition. So while this variable is less than five, print the number and then increase the number by one. So this is, so we're going to, let's go through this in our heads. So we have my num is zero. All right. While my num is less than five. Well, it is less than five. Print my num. Okay, print zero. Now my num is equal to zero plus one. So now it's equal to one. Okay. Is my num less than five? Yes, it's equal to one. Print one. Now it's equal to one plus one is two. Go again. While my num, now it's equal to two, is less than five. Print my num. My num equals my num plus one. Let's look at what this does. Okay. I'm going to have a variable here, my num equals zero, while my num is less than five. So this is our condition. Print my num. Then my num equals my num plus one. What you can also do here if you want, and I know I'll see this, so I'm addressing it, my num plus equals one. You can write this as a shorthand for when you want to increase a variable by one, instead of saying the variable equals variable plus one, you can say plus equal one. Anyway, just a little tidbit. Okay. And then I just want to print, yeah, done or something to show that we're out of the loop. All right, let's see what this is going to do. All right, and it printed zero, one, two, three, four, done. So it went through, it printed the number, it increased that number by one, and then went back to here, evaluated if the number was less than five, printed the number, and then increased it by one. And it did that until my num became five. Once my num became five, it says, oh, no, now this condition is false. And we print done. So that is the logic behind loops, behind while loops. And I see someone getting a little bit ahead inside the chat, which I always love. What about an infinite loop? Maybe you have heard this phrase before. I want you to look at this. What happens if I delete this line? What if I get rid of that? Now what happens? It's just gonna keep going. It's just going to keep going. My num, this condition is never changing. My num always equals zero. It will always be less than five. It's just going to print this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yep, that's an infinite. That's what we call an infinite loop. And those are bad. So let's say run it. Oh, and it's still going. It's still going. So then I have to actually hit the stop button. It's going to have to stop it. I mean, look at how many zeros it printed. I'm still scrolling. Like, man, look at how many zeros it printed. So what we need to do in here. Make sure within a while loop, you change this condition somehow. You change the value that you're evaluating. You do something to make sure that it will eventually stop the loop. So what we do, oops, what we do here is we say, you know, my num plus equal one. It increase by one each time. Now, what about this? What about, my num equals my num minus one. I changed the condition. I changed the variable. Now what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, someone said well, when you accidentally print a whole manual instead of some pages of that manual. Exactly. Yes, I love that example. Thank you for that. Yep. Y'all are right. My num is going down. It'll still be less than five. So even though you've changed my num, it will always still be less than five. It's never going to break out of this loop. It's still just going to, like, if we run this, ah, it's just going to keep on going. And that's fun, but maybe not, maybe not useful. Maybe not what we wanted. So make sure that you are changing this in a way that will actually affect how that this condition will eventually be false. Yep, yep, yep. 
So make sure you're always changing this so that the condition will be uh, eventually will be false. So that's while loops. That is while loops. Yep, and you can look at these slides if you want to look at, you know, when will it be an infinite loop? How can you check? All right. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Sometimes I like to give you some code and have you run it in your head. Look, read it in your head and then um, think about what it will output. That's a very good exercise to make sure you understand um, what a program is doing. Okay, so first of all, don't look at this line. Just look at this. What will this code do? And you can ignore line one and line 10 for now. That uh, doesn't really do anything for us currently. We can, we'll talk about what this def main means later, but just look at this code inside here. We have x equals 10. While x is greater than zero, print x. x equals x minus one. And then outside the loop, print blast off. So what, what will this print? Go ahead and put in the chat what this program will do. Awesome, awesome. Go ahead. You have a couple more. Yep, yep, yep. Keep putting those answers in. I love to see. I love to see your interactions. On a paper output computer, that's incredible. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yes, everyone is getting it correct. Thank you so much. I love hearing. I are hearing, I love reading your responses. So exactly, this is gonna do a countdown and then blast off. So um, let's go ahead and just try it in here. Let's say uh, x equals 10 while x is greater than zero. Is that what it is? Print x. Don't forget this colon here. You always need this colon when you have when you're going into a control structure block like uh, like if statements and while loops. I kind of I don't talk about it a lot um, because it's it's just always there. But never forget that colon. All right, while x is greater than zero, colon print x x equals x minus one. All right, and now print blast off. Okay, get rid of all this output. All right, now if I run this, yep, a lot of you got it right. It's doing a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, blah, 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 blast off. This little fun little program. So what happens, back to these slides, what happens if I replace line six with x equals x plus one? Pop quiz. What happens if I replace line six on this screenshot with x equals x plus one? Thank you, thank you. Yep. Perfect, everyone, you got it. It's gonna be an infinite loop. It's just gonna keep going and going and going just like before. You say, Miranda, you're just telling me the same things over and over again. I am, but you will forget them. So I like to practice things over and over so that you remember to break out of your infinite loop. So if we make this x equals x plus one, this is not actually gonna do what we want. It's just gonna keep keep going and going and going. That will want infinite loop. All right, make sure, make sure you're changing this in a way that corresponds to this condition here. Make sure it'll break out eventually. Don't let it, don't keep it trapped in the loop. Don't keep it trapped in the loop. Okay. Now, I skipped over that slide, we can get back to it. Okay. All right. Let's look at this example here. This is another one that I want you to read, look at, and tell me what's gonna happen here. So we have this, again, you can ignore the def main and stuff. Um, we've got some input here. We've got, input, accepting input, and says while this variable is equal to y, print the instructions. What's gonna happen here 
if the user print, uh, types W. What's going to happen in this if the user types W? Nope, I mean W. All right, I'm seeing some guesses. Go ahead, think about it. Think about it like this program, okay? Think about it like this program. I'm seeing a lot of error. So what happens? So instructions equals raise your hand if you would like to talk. Repeat equals input. Would you like to read the instructions again? So all this is going to do is going to take in some input. There's no restriction on that input. It's just going to accept input. So repeat will be assigned to whatever the user inputs. Repeat could be cat. Repeat could be seven. All we're checking for here is if it equals y. So this says while repeat equals y, print the instructions. If repeat never equals y, this condition is never satisfied. Ah. This condition is never satisfied and the while loop just doesn't run. So nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. So not an error. Let's and just so you believe me, just so you believe me, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, I'm not going to do that whole thing. I have. All right. Uh, instructions equals, please raise your hand. Repeat equals input. And so just because, just because I am putting, you know, y slash n, yes or no here, that doesn't mean that that can, you know, that's, this is just a string. Python doesn't know what this means. Python's just printing this as a string. It's accepting this as input. So now let's say while repeat equal equal y print instructions. And then let's say, you know, would you like after? All right, and then we're going to ask them again until their input changes. Grant, thank you for listening to the instructions. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so it says, would you like to hear the instructions again? Notice I actually forgot to print the instructions at the start. Uh, everyone makes mistakes, that's okay. So I forgot to print the instructions at the start, and it just said, would you like to hear the instructions again? That doesn't make sense. So let's print those instructions, first of all print instructions. All right. All right. Now it's going to say, please raise your hand. Would you like to hear the instructions again? Yes or no? So if I say, let's, let's try that case. I said, I'm going to type W. Ah, it doesn't do anything. That's because this condition is only going to run. This loop is only going to run if this condition is true. If it's never true, it never runs. Try it again. Type in whatever I want. Try it again. Now let's say yes. Let's type Y. And now it's going to keep asking me because see, I have this input inside of our loop. This is a great way, hint, hint. So this is a great way to check user input and then prompt for the correct input again. So let's say you wanted to check for a password. If someone got it wrong, you could use a loop to keep asking them again and again. So as long as I type Y, it's going to keep giving me those instructions and asking for my input until I type something that's not Y. And now it says, thank you for listening to the instructions. Awesome, awesome. Okay, we've got about, about five minutes left. So let me see, what do we have? Okay, how, how about for the last couple of minutes, work on this task here. If you finish, you can send me your code or 
don't know, let's just work on this for the last couple of minutes. You can ask questions if you want. And then right at six, I will go over how to do this. So everyone work on this task here. And then at the very end of class, I will go over how to do it. And if you get the code and you would like to share it, feel free to put it in the chat or Discord or wherever. But go ahead and work on this just for the last couple of minutes of class to make sure we understand while loops. Okay, it is six o'clock my time. So let's go ahead. How was this? Go ahead and put a thumbs up if you felt good about this task or some other thumbs down or something if you weren't weren't so sure about this task. All right, I saw a thumbs up. I see some thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Okay, thank you for everyone that's given me those little reactions. I love them. Awesome. Okay, so it looked like we were mostly good on this. If you needed some help, feel free to reach out to some TAs. This is not homework. This was just a little practice here. So let's go ahead and look at, so especially if you weren't sure how to do this, I'm going to show you how to do it in um, a couple minutes here. Okay, so just going to copy this over here. So let's go over here, put the instructions, oops. 
All right, so let's go over this. And if you have to go, you may go. But if you had trouble with this, I suggest you stick around for just a couple minutes more. Um, so I'm going to go over the solution to this. All right, so create a password variable. So we're going to, first of all, we need to create a correct password. I'm just going to say one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. So correct password is one, two, three. Now, how am I going to check? How am I going to ask the user to input their password? Does someone want to share what code they put here to um, ask the user to enter the password? What do we use for user input? If you worked on this and got to this part, what did you use here to get your user input? We're a little shy today. I had some people that said they felt pretty good about it. Does anyone want to share? Oh, here we go. Here's some. Oh, okay. Amazing. No, let's not. Let's not talk negatively. Yeah, so we got input here. So what you just do is set set your variable to that input value. So you're going to say password equals input. And then you're just going to give instructions here. So this is just your instructions. This is for the user. But the main thing is that you set your variable equal to this input. All right, now how do we check that the password is correct? Amazing, thank you for your code. Right, so now when we want to check, so make sure you are actually are checking, checking if that password is correct. So we're actually gonna check it in our condition. Remember this while loop takes a condition. So we're gonna say while, password, remember, does not equal, exclamation equal, while password does not equal correct password, we need to ask them for their password again. So I'm going to say password equals, I'm just going to copy this, say password equals input, enter your password. So while password is not correct, does not equal correct password, do that input again. And then finally, print success if they logged in, if they entered the correct password. OK, so if that was a little difficult for you, try practicing on this page. Practice with um, loops. Practice uh, if it has a thing for input. I would go through um, you know, some of our study materials. Try watching these recordings again. Um, and You'll get it. It's OK. It's hard for everyone the first time. So let's go ahead and run this. Just check it into your password, password or something. Obviously, not a very secure way to enter a password where everyone can see it. All right, so anytime I get it wrong, it's telling me it's wrong. And now I'm going to type in the correct password, 123, now it's success. What I want you to get out of this, input, assign a variable to input, use a while loop, check if that variable is equal to something, if it's not, we're gonna ask them to enter it again. And we're gonna keep doing that until they enter the correct thing. That's a very common loop in programming. All right, thank you so much for sticking around a couple extra minutes. Um, I hope that this cleared up some of the uh, concepts that we looked at last time, I'm trying to figure out how to stop my sharing. Okay. And that's all that I have for you today. Again, thank you for sticking around a couple extra minutes. Um, I will put the assignment at the end of the slides. Actually, let me share that for those of you that want to stick around a little bit. Um, we didn't go through all of these slides, so we're going to assign, where is it? This assignment is your homework for the week. So be sure to do this assignment. I'm gonna put this at the end of the slides so that it's more, it's clearer, let's see, all right. And then the rest of this is gonna go away. Oh, okay, so that assignment is at the end as well.
All right, so this is your assignment. It's at the very end of the slides. I always try to put it at the end of the slides. All right, that's all that I have for you today. If you have some questions, feel free to stick around. I can stick around for a couple minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and y'all are free to go. Thank you so much for joining us.